If you look on eBay, you can find these AMD Radeon Low Profile Graphics Cards. We have a couple of models that we will test in this video. We will look at the 3D gaming performance, but also check out driver support and what about video playback and support for higher resolutions. On the right side, we have the Radeon 7570 and 8570. And on the left side, we've got the Radeon 7470 as well as the 8490. Let's start by looking at 3D performance. Before we check out some graphs and benchmark results, the cards on the right side, these are significantly faster. So if you're looking for model numbers starting with 75 and 85, they will be much faster. They've got a 128 bit memory interface. In comparison, the cards on the left side only have a 64 bit memory interface. So the memory bandwidth is significantly lower. So if you see a model number starting with a 74 or 84, these are not as fast as the ones with 75 or 85. Here we have GPU set on all these four graphics cards. You can pause the video, take a screenshot to have a closer look. And this is the machine I used for testing, a HP ProDesk with an i7-4770 and 16 gigabytes of dual channel memory. Let's start off with looking at Tomb Raider at 720p with the normal preset and we can see a clear division between the cards. The faster versions uh, they get us almost 60 fps whereas the lower two models struggle to hit 30. In Just Cause 2 again 720p but this time with low settings we can see a similar picture. Now the two faster models achieving over 60 fps and the two lower cards just over 30 and we can see that the 8570 is quite a bit faster than the 7570. In Dirt 3 we can see the same picture, we're running at 720p medium preset, the 8570 and 7570 significantly faster compared to the 8490 and 7470. Let's test a few older retro games, we have Half-Life 2 running at 1080p with high settings and this game is playable on most of the cards, the 8490 and 7470 not quite hitting the 60 FPS, so lower the, lower the resolution a little bit and maybe reduce the details and it should get you there, whereas the 7570 and 8570 are significantly faster. Let's test the game with OpenGL, this is Doom 3 running at 1280 by 1024 ultra preset all the cards achieve over 60 FPS. This is the only test where the 8570 was slower than the 7570. Not quite sure what's going on, but it was the only game where I saw this difference. So in terms of performance, the 8570 is definitely the fastest graphics card, but there are more differences. I'm just gonna move the 7570 to the left to illustrate what's going on here. The 8570 is the much more modern card. This is built on a 20 something nanometer process, whereas these cards are older tech. They are built on a 40 nanometer process. This uh, GPU is built uh, around the newer graphics core next one architecture, whereas these ones use the older TerraScale 2 architecture. And this matters a lot when it comes to the drivers. On the newer 8570, we can install the Adrenaline 22.6.1 drivers from July of 2022. However, on the older cards with the TerraScale 2 architecture, we have a choice between two drivers. We can go with the Catalyst 15.7.1 from July 2015 or with the Crimson 16.2.1 better drivers from March of 2016. So there are no newer drivers available. This is under Windows 10. So I tested with the 8490 comparing the two drivers to find out if there's a difference and there's not much of a difference, but the Crimson Edition drivers, they do uh, perform a little bit faster. So I would recommend that you start with these drivers first if you wanna play games on these older generation graphics cards. We will try overclocking the 8570 next, but let's talk about the display output. They all have a display port, and once again, there's a clear divide between the newer generation and the older one. The older generation cards, they can do 4K 
only at 30 hertz so that's a bit of a bummer for driving a media pc most video content is less than 30 fps so maybe it's an option but using keyboard and mouse to uh, operate your computer at 30 hertz is not really fun whereas on the newer card we get display port 1.4 and this one supports 4k at 60 hertz with 10-bit colors whereas on these cards the highest i could get them to operate at was 4k 30 with 8-bit colors i also tested media playback and i started with the more modern 8570 unfortunately didn't have much success using youtube the vp9 codec is not accelerated at all so it was entirely uh, decoded on the processor on the cpu and playing uh, h264 content either through youtube you can get a chrome plugin to force that it struggled with 1080p 60 videos the uh, decoder was sitting at around 90 percent of utilization and if you move the mouse or there was some overlay going on it would definitely skip frames so it was borderline able to run 1080p videos at 60 uh, fps that means the 8570 can be used as a 1080p media center graphics card but not for youtube you have to use the uh, x264 codec which is just not as efficient as the more modern vp9 codec that's a bit of a bummer uh, but it is what it is next i tried the 8570 because it consumes less power is built on a smaller manufacturing process so i went into the drivers and maxed out all the sliders the core and the memory are running now at one gigahertz and look at that we can see quite a performance boost um, i put a graph on the screen with all the games that we've tested so across the board overclocking worked really well on this video card the fan speed does increase i actually maxed out the fan speed manually just to make sure uh, to not get any crashes and i didn't see any glitches with the graphics so uh, the card was stable at that clock speed but do consider that the fan speed will increase when you overclock this video card and of course we have to test retro compatibility what about windows xp support all four cards have windows xp drivers i tested with xp pro service pack 3 the 32-bit version and i tried some half-life 2 and some far cry and on the 8570 even under windows xp you can play them at 4k 60 silky smooth so that was a good experience the xp drivers they don't uh, install straight away if you install through the uh, driver installer you will get a fail message the driver actually doesn't install it installs the catalyst control center the sound card and all that stuff what you have to do is reboot the machine go into the device manager and manually install the drivers they will be extracted on the c drive slash amd and just take it from there so guys we had a quick look at these four low profile amd radeon video cards there's a lot to like but it all boils down to the price. Around $20 is what I would spend on these faster cards. This lower ones, maybe 10 to $15. I was lucky with my 8570. Um, it was around 23 Australian dollars. That's maybe 16 US dollars, including free shipping. So that's fair value. I would not spend 30 or $40. That's too much. Um, so maybe contact the seller and make them an offer. Because uh, the driver situation, they're not going to receive any more driver updates. So these cards are end of life. There's no support anymore. And also the video uh, acceleration features are not up to speed with modern technology so that's all something to keep in mind for retro gaming all these cards can be of interest um, lean i would lean towards the uh, 75 series or the 85 series with the 128 bit interface uh, they will perform much better gddr3 or 5 actually didn't make much of a difference that card is gddr3 that one is gddr5 this card was still faster so it's not all about the memory technology but the memory interface 64 versus 128 that actually makes a big difference so ideally go for the 8570 that card is faster cooler overclocks well it's got newer drivers it can do 4k 60 and has better video acceleration as well so that's the card i would grab if you want a specific recommendation
And that's it for this video guys. Let me know if there's other video cards you want me to check out or any other model numbers that you think uh, are worthy to consider. These graphics cards, they come out mostly out of X Dell workstation PCs as far as I'm aware. Um, there are various QR codes at the back, but otherwise there are no model numbers written on these cards. If you look at the fan blades, the 75 and 85 series, they have smaller fan blades, so maybe that's an easy way to distinguish these cards. And that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And that's it. See you soon in the next one.